And that's one of the things I would say. Make sure you've got in your interview, especially when you're interviewing for the first time, some form of checklist that you can just go through. You don't have to tick it off as you're going along. You can just <laughs> review it. <laughs> but it just going. needs, especially at the beginning part of it, because it's got uh, W. First bullet point, be punctual. Never let somebody wait for an interview without going out and letting them know and running late or anything like that, somebody else to see them. Don't let them fester yeah. thinking when somebody's going to come to you. Um, greet the candidate in person. Make sure that if you go see the candidate, speak to them, bring them into the room. Um, it's a nice touch, it's a nice personal touch. Introduce yourself and give yourself a job title. Let them know who they're interviewing. I mean, they may have already got that information, but again, it's my name is, I'll be interviewing you today, my position is, so that they know who they're speaking to. Um, confirm the purpose of the interview. Look, you know, when you sit down there, it's not a bad idea. I know it sounds simple. Not a bad idea to let them know. So you've applied for, or you're here for the, for, for the position of, so that was, you know, this has happened before where people have gone to an interview and then, oh, I'm not I'm in the wrong room. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this wasn't the job I expected it to be. <laughs> Especially if you use agencies and things like that. Wherever the, can, you can eliminate any form of confusion, let them know that. Again, okay. establish the rapport with a few easy questions to start off with. Now, the best candidate you can have is a talkative candidate. You should be doing about 20-25% of the talking, they should be doing 75-80% to 80 of the talking. Yeah. They should be doing the talk. If you're doing all the talking, you're not interviewing, you're just talking. Yeah. And talking is not interviewing. No. What you've got to be able to do is you've got to ask the question, you've got to listen to the answer, <laughs> and you've got to be able to respond to the questionnaire, um, to, the, to the interviewee. So when they answer is you're responding. You're nodding your head, you're smiling, uh -huh, uh -huh. be positive in terms of that. It's not just asking questions. You can ask as many machine gun questions as you like, but make sure that when you're doing it, you are responding in a human fashion. Respond in terms of, oh, that's interesting, ah, I see, okay, good, thank you much for that. Be responsive, because you don't want the person, you want the person to open up not be guarded. Mm -hmm. When somebody considers every question you ask and think, oh, what's the reason behind that, what I need to say? When somebody has crossed that barrier of what we call relationship, yeah. then they'll be open with you. And i tell you what, if you want to get, as I say, as I said before, you can't tell when somebody's lying to you, mm. but if they've got a candidate who's open, feels comfortable with you, yeah. things will come out, come out, which if it's not true, they, there will be inconsistencies in what they say. Yeah. Now, the first thing to do to open up a candidate, especially somebody who's not been interviewed for ages, or a, new, or a young candidate, is ask a few what we call chit-chat questions on the way through. Uh, when they sit down, how is your journey in? Yeah. Um, what do you know about our organisation? Tell me about your job. Some of the simple chit-chat questions, as we say. Ask about their journey. Get them to talk about that. You might look at the CV or application form and ask them a question which they can talk about. I don't know, if they're young or new, they can talk about school or college. Um, interest and hobbies are always a good one. If you can find something to get somebody to talk about and feel comfortable with you, if they feel comfortable with you, they will, see that's, the first part of relationship is meeting and greeting. The second part is when you have some form of connection between the two of you. And a good interviewer will get the person to feel comfortable with them. And that, the, the, the chit-chat questions, the response is a very good element of that. So think about your chit-chat questions to start yeah. off with. Nothing too major, but if you, until you know somebody is not as nervous uh, then yeah. if, they, if you feel their nervousness is interrupting their answers, then you've got to make them feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. So it might take you three or four, but get used to doing yeah. those. Do you have any other examples? So I was going that, that was always going to be kind of like a uh, icebreaker question for me, like what? Oh, so what do you know about the charity? Yeah. Because um, obviously, they, I'm assuming they would have read up at least its website or something. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've written down hobbies here, but I don't know if I'd feel comfortable asking someone about the hobbies straight away. Maybe that's like a close. Maybe I'd feel more comfortable closing on that. Oh, do you have any hobbies? Yeah. Well, the well, thing about the hobbies question is, if they've got hobbies on there, if it was something with interesting hobbies, uh, travelling and reading, yeah. the easy thing to do is use that as a part of um, yeah. communication, and you can use that as part of interest. Yeah. Show, showing an interest in them. In oh, I see interest. that you, you like yeah. traveling. What's the most? Well, you know, tell me where have you been. Yeah. What's the most? Imp uh, you know, what most interesting place you've been to? Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Okay. I'm always respond to the person. One of the things about creating relationship is acknowledging not just the person's answer, but acknowledging the person. 
So if I were to say to you, uh, okay, oh, what's the most imp- what's, the, what's the best holiday you've ever had, or what's the most interesting place you've had, or oh, I see you've been there, tell me about that, or if it's an interest, it just gets them to talk. Um, yeah. If they're quite young, you might want to say, to, you might ask a question at school, what was your favourite subject at school? Just yeah. something simple, just to, really this part of the interview is just getting a little bit of it, it's so important. Because yeah. if they're scared of you, and you act in a way which is scary, mm. then they'll be guarded. Yeah. If you question, if, they, if you ask a question and then you look quizzically or you, you question it in terms of you're showing disapproval, mm. then what you're doing there is you're now bringing negatives into the process. Yeah. And what people do under pressure is they look for areas of comfort. Now, if I feel that I said something wrong initially, that'll stay with me because I'm quite stressed. Yeah. But I said that wrong and I'll go through my mind. I shouldn't have said that. Now, everything yeah. you say from then on, I'll be thinking, no, I don't want to back that up. And, you, and yeah. your inner voice will be saying, shut up, shut up, don't say that. You said yeah, it earlier, you messed it all up. You've already got that. And then you get even more nervous or whatever. Yeah. So your job as an interviewer is like being a doctor. Yeah. Good doctors, ask twice as many questions. Yeah. A survey showed that good doctors actually answer 1.7 more questions because people feel comfortable just admitting, mm. and I'm a bit worried about my shoulder, my mum had arthritis, I don't know whether it's that, and say, oh, that's all right, I'll do some tests on that. Yeah. But if you, might, if you walk out without saying that, you might think, oh, I should have asked a question. Yeah. Oh, I don't feel comfortable, because, you, you, know, you, you know, I didn't really feel, uh, no, uh, and then you're worried about your shoulder still, you're not gonna get the treatment. Same with yeah. an interviewer. You've got to make the person not run or run to areas of hiding behind rocks uh, or back it or, cu- or clamming up for fears of, for, for for feeling safe in that particular situation. They've got to feel comfortable with you as much as you've got to feel comfortable with them. And the last part of the welcome, um, explain you'll be taking notes. Tell them the structure, explain you'll be taking notes, let them know what you're going to be doing in the interview, so they know exactly what the format will be. Now it may be that you ask, you talk about the organisation before you ask them questions, or you ask them questions, or you might show them around the, the department, or it may be that you'll go in for a second interview. So there will be a structure to it that you will follow, and you need to know what structure is, and be able to explain that structure to them. After you've done all that, then you can really get into the second part, which is again asking the questions.